Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis Legacy. The sorority secrets of the goddess next door are revealed in this all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis Legacy in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere. Better get the cool slow, y'all, because we're having us a barbecue. <laughs> Vice President Kamala Harris invited the cast of the 1980s sitcom A Different World to the White House to discuss student loan debt relief and funding for HBCUs. We're living in a different world. Whether you graduated from Dillman or... Or went to the real HU. Student loan debt is a burden for far too many people these days, and we're doing something about it. To learn more, visit studentaid.gov. There you go. Now, Vice President Kamala Harris decided to invite the cast of the 1980s sitcom A Different World to the White House to talk about student loan debt relief and to talk about the funding of HBCUs. And bringing the cast of the 1980s sitcom A Different World shows how completely disconnected Vice President Kamala Harris and the Biden administration are as related to the needs and the issues of foundational black Americans in the 21st century. Now, A Different World was a sitcom that came on in the 1980s when I was in high school, and it ran from 1988 up until 1992 when I graduated from Taft High School. And I remember watching the finale of A Different World about a week or two before I graduated high school, and I was really happy to see the end of this show. And it ended on a high note with Dwayne and Whitley basically getting ready to move to Japan after he made up this computer program, and he was getting ready to go on to the next step in his career. And all the members of the cast of A Different World came and moved on with their lives. Now, as they moved on with their lives, over 30 years have passed, and as those 30 years have passed, we can see how completely out of touch Vice President Kamala Harris is as related to the needs of modern day foundational black Americans, because the world is a completely different place than the cast of a different world came from 30 years later. And almost 30 years later, the world is a completely different place. And the but Vice President Kamala Harris just shows how out of touch she is because to invite the cast of a show that came on over 30 years ago to the White House to discuss modern issues shows how completely detached she is from the realities of the American people right now. Now, when it comes to the whole cast of a different world, again, they came from a completely different world because that show was made in the late 1980s and it was made to appeal to Gen Xers and most of the people who came from the 1980s 30 years later, they're about my age and I'm 50 years old, and most of those people either got all of their student loan debts basically paid off at this point, or like in my case, they got their college education through grants because they were smart enough to go to a more affordable college, and they are now debt free like I am right now. So most of the Gen Xers who know about a different world came from a completely different world than the issue Kamala Harris is presenting. And that really shows how, again, inept and incompetent she is, because here you are with the cast of a TV show that came on 30 years ago, actors from Hollywood who are basically millionaires at this point, and you're coming to them to talk about student loan debt relief that mostly impacts millennials, Gen Y, and Gen Z, and Generation Alpha, who are basically fiscally overwhelmed because they were not really taught how to manage their debt financially 
and were going on the propaganda that they were told, and I was told, that you need to go to college in order to have a career. And as they got told this, they basically got, went out here and went and got into a whole lot of student loan debt. And as those student loans piled up, these, these stu kids got debt into the high six figures in some cases as they pursued degrees that were absolutely worthless, like things like gender studies, women's studies, and even basket weaving and, and basket design. And now what the Biden administration proposes is that we, the people, need to go out here and get, forgive these student loans. And what they don't see is that by making this proposal to forgive student loans, what you are doing is creating a slippery slope that will lead to the fiscal instability of the United States. Now, the Supreme Court has already stated that the whole proposal to forgive student loan debt is unconstitutional, and basically Joe Biden would need to get all of the Congress involved in order to sign off on any sort of allocation of money. So this whole campaign to try to appeal to black voters with the cast of a different world really shows how basically what the vice president is trying to do is pull an okie doke on the black voter and thinking they can go out here and trick the black voter into voting for something that they won't get. Now, they already pulled this okie doke on most millennials in 2022, and many of the millennials out here are still feeling the burn from Biden making the promise that he would be able to forgive their student loans. And once the rug was yanked out from under them by the Supreme Court, he had already gotten their votes for the Congress and the Senate. And basically many of those millennials feel, feel stupid right now because they got plagued. And what they want to do is use the same playbook on the black voter because the paternalistic Biden administration and the condescending Kamala Harris want to make believe that black people are stupid and will fall for an okie doke for forgiveness of student loans, not seeing that this is not something that is legislatively possible because no politician in their right mind is going to go out here and vote for legislation to forgive student loans because that would create a fiscal slippery slope for the entire financial system because if you have if you can forgive student loans then you would have to be able to forgive credit card loans mortgages car loans and other sorts of payments and again that creates a slippery slope and a slippery one that makes it where the economy becomes destabilized because when you absolve people of fiscal responsibility for one type of debt what you do is create fiscal irresponsibility for all debts. That's what Vice President Kamala Harris is basically proposing, and proposing this legislation, again, as related to black people, hoping that naive, gullible black people will fall for this okie doke, and hoping that naive black people will sit there and believe that this is an incentive to go out here and vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. But this whole talking point about student loan debt is not our talking point as related to tangibles. No, it is not our talking point as related to tangibles. And the whole thing is this is not part of our black agenda. No, our part of a black agenda it, as related to finance is reparations. And reparations covers more than student loan debt. No, reparations is meant to pay our and us for the labor of our ancestors, the oppression that stifled our economy due to Jim Crow, and the discrimination that denied many black people employment in the North during the days of Jim Crow, and to pay for people like myself who were denied opportunities due to current and ongoing discrimination, even though people like myself got college degrees we were oftentimes not able to get job opportunities due to the current and ongoing discrimination. And that's where Kamala Harris's whole bringing the cast of a different world to the White House just is disingenuous because 
you bring a bunch of Hollywood stars to talk about an issue that doesn't even affect that generation and affects the generations of millennials, Gen Y, Gen Z, and Generation Alpha. Again, people who are struggling right now because they got a miss, a financial miseducation about getting a college education. And as they got that financial miseducation, they are basically drowning in debt and they're drowning in debt as a result of policies presented by shows like A Different World, which presented you the idea that you needed a college degree in order to get a job. That's what was sold to me when I was younger, and I never saw that pay off. I mean, I got jobs here and there, but in many cases, people were trying to push me out of those jobs. I mean, the last job I had was in 2008, and I wound up getting set up by people at work, and that's what people are frustrated about again and this is again something that really will stimulate your emotions but it's not something that's about a black agenda and that's what they're trying to do is take us off the course of a black agenda with this pandering what they want to do is take you off the course of a black agenda with this pandering for black votes but there's nothing substantive on the table as related to a black vote because this is not something that is core to a black agenda. No, what's core to a black agenda is something that we as black people are the ones who are supposed to present. We are the ones who are supposed to present the actual black agenda. And we are the ones who are supposed to be telling the candidates what we want. We're not supposed to be dictated to by a vice president who isn't even black with this empty gesture that's presented disingenuously with a cast of millionaires. I mean, this is what they do. They trot out a bunch of Hollywood celebrities hoping to appeal to spellbound black people, similar to the way Ice Cube came in front of black people with his whole contract with black America, a contract black people did not agree to. And what Kamala Harris is hoping to do is use the same celebrities to be able to mesmerize the spellbound black people as they get caught up in nostalgia about an old 1980s TV show. I mean, they want to go out here and appeal to all of us Gen Xers and talking about, oh, we've got the cast of A Different World. Well, the cast of A Different World are a group of senior citizens at this point, and what this policy isn't going to help many of the young brothers and sisters who really do need tangible help and the tangible help that would help them is reparations because reparations money in your hand basically can be used to pay off debt and reparations money can be used to go out and be able for you to go out and start a business so that you won't have to go out here and work somebody's job that's what reparations money would do for foundational black americans provide us tangible financial security, provide us with tangible fiscal um, stability, and allow our economy to finally actualize its potential. And that's what Vice President Kamala Harris wants to keep you away from. She wants to keep you from being able to get the tangible of reparations by distracting you with the cast of a 30-year-old sitcom and keep you from being able to get your tangibles as related to making sure that you have a good financial life. Moreover, if the th there are other policies that we need related to a black agenda, such as an anti-black hate crime bill, which anti-black hate was shown in episodes of a different world, and you would think an anti-black hate crime bill would be a priority for Kamala Harris. No, it's not a priority because she would rather go out here and get celebrities to distract you so that you won't get actual tangible policies that will benefit you because black people are the ones who are mostly the victims of anti-black hate crimes. And as the victims of most of the anti-black hate crimes, we deserve an anti-black hate crime law to be able to punish all of these racist, white supremacist, race soldiers, and suburban commandos like George Zimmerman who go out and believe that it's their right to go out here and dictate to black people where they should go in this country. 
Now, this whole policy, again, is one that's completely backwards and, again, shows how out of touch and deeply disconnected and tone-deaf Vice President Kamala Harris and the Biden administration are as related to the black vote. But what is even more showing how tone-deaf they are is this whole campaign to talk about HBCUs. Now, I find it interesting that Vice President Kamala Harris wants to sit there and talk about HBCUs when the Biden administration was the one that wound up cutting all the funding that President Trump put in place to help the HBCUs. I mean, I find it interesting that he's going to sit there and talk about saving HBCUs when he was the one who basically wound up cutting all the funding and cut their funding to the point where they were out here looking for help, but now he wants to go on the campaign trail to talk about how he wants to save the HBCUs. And again, that's just extremely disingenuous. And that's, again, an empty gesture, again, to meant to pander to black voters, but not give us anything tangible at all. And that's why, black folks, you just got to stop falling for these okie dokes as related to these empty symbolic gestures and these and all of this pandering because this is just showing how they're not looking to connect with the foundational black American voter like about a week ago where Joe Biden decided to make remarks at, at a virtual space for the National Action Network again an organization that doesn't represent foundational black Americans the he goes to the same National Action Network where he told its leader Al Sharpton back in 2020, well, along with a whole bunch, of, whole bunch of black misleaders, that he could do nothing for black people, but he continues to not see how he's basically showing contempt for the foundational black American voter by going to a virtual space to make remarks to a leader he already disrespected, not seeing how he further disrespects the foundational black American voter, because by not looking to go face to face with people, that is the ultimate form of disrespect. Now, I understand some people will say, oh, that he has a busy schedule, but when people are a priority, people make time for people. And if somebody is serious about getting something done with someone, they make the time to be with that person. And when it, with your Joe Biden basically having an approval rating that's in the toilet about 38 percent and almost 60 percent of the country not liking him and black voters really just feeling disgusted because after taking their booties to the poll, they got nothing for their vote in the first term of the Biden administration. You have him talking about how we're going to get wins in a second term. Well, we, if we didn't get any wins in the first term, how are we going to get any in the second? Critical question I have to ask, because when I look at this whole plan with Joe Biden, he basically has shown his disrespect for black people and continues to show his disrespect to black people. And black people, sadly, just because they're so starved for attention, will believe that, oh, Kamala Harris bringing in the cast of a different world means that things are going to change in the world of black people. Well, in the almost 16 years since Barack Obama was president, there has been no hope of anything changing for black people. And you have the same administration in place that was in place during the Obama years. And even with the black president and the white president, we're not seeing anything tangible being presented to black people. And a, a, a whole in, a administration basically showing its contempt for black people and how out of touch it is. Because when you bring the cast of a 30 plus year old show to the White House and talk about this is representing black issues, that shows one, that you're completely disconnected from the issues of black people. Two, it shows that you're completely tone deaf. And three, it basically shows how you have little regard for the issues of modern day foundational black Americans, modern day foundational black Americans who are insisting on tangibles, but not getting anything tangible at all. And even though these, this, this whole party is losing the support of black voters, it's not giving black voters any incentive to go out here and look to vote for blue because blue doesn't care if you're black no matter who and that's really shown by this whole pathetic stunt 
designed to, again, bring the cast of an old TV show that many millennials and Gen Y and Gen Z and Generation Alpha haven't watched. I mean, more kids from those generations watched True Jackson VP, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, Victorious, and the um, all of those other shows that were on Nickelodeon and Disney. I mean, they know that cast of those sitcoms they don't know who a di oh, the cast of A Different World is because A Different World was in syndication on cable for many, for many years. And most of that cast, again, the kids don't know that the people of my generation and maybe my cousin's generation, uh, he knows about the cast of A Different World, but he's about 36, 37 at this point, And he basically was watching a different set of shows in the 90s. So this isn't really a really thought out plan as related to trying to appeal to black voters, but the Biden administration really hasn't shown much concern about the black voter at all over at the course of its campaign. And the Obama didn't care about black people either. And we haven't heard much from Donald Trump. And I say that because I'm not a Donald Trump supporter. I don't really care much about Donald Trump. But the whole thing is he did at least something as related to the HBCUs. And he at least did try to listen and try to appeal to black people with that possible platinum plan. But the whole thing is we're not seeing any tangibles from either side. And since there's nothing on the table concrete for black people, then we don't need to take our booties to the pole. We can continue to sit our ass on the couch and we can continue to sit our ass on the couch because unless there's something tangible on the table for black people, then we don't need to go out here and vote for anyone at all because there's nothing on the table. I mean, there's stuff on the table for Israelis. There's stuff on the table for migrants. There's stuff who aren't even citizens. There's stuff on the table for Ukrainians that aren't citizens. But when it comes to black people, you want to try to do the same thing he did in 2020, where he told black people to go up, go to the Hispanics to get something tangible, because that's what this is overall when you really think about it. He's telling black people that, oh, you'll get something from student loan debt relief that everybody would get, but it's not something specific to black people like reparations because reparations would be something specific for a foundational black American like myself to pay me for the over 25 years of discrimination that denied me opportunities in the job market. I mean, reparations would be something tangible, a check cut specifically for foundational black Americans that would allow them to be able to pay debt and again, a tangible in that check that would be for specifically for a foundational black American. That's what reparations would be. And again, that tangible, along with an anti-black hate crime bill, which would punish racists for going after black people. That's what would help black people, not to mention a r real police reform and real accountability for police and brutalizing black people. This is just, again, a tip of the iceberg of things that would benefit black people specifically. And again, unless there's something specific for black people, then we don't nearly need to go out here and take our booties to the pole because if there's no support for a black agenda and tangibles for black people, then there's no reason for black people to go out here and vote for, for, for anybody blue, no matter who. Now, this was a video requested by one of my viewers, and if you want to request a video, you can send a minimum of a $15 donation to the Cash App or the PayPal by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to pick up some of my positive black fiction on the SJS Direct imprint, you can find the books of the Isis series, the Steam series, the John Haynes series, the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, my black sorority novel, The Thetas, my black vampire novel, Eternal Night, and my black business novel, Recipe for Success. You can find all those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find all those books at other online booksellers like Smashwords, Google Play, the iBookstore, Draft the Digital, Barnes & Noble, and even big box retailers like Walmart and Target. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Amari's Revenge. The goddess next door is confronted by a newbie and queen out for revenge at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in this inaugural Isis series adventure. 
Get your copy of Isis, Amari's Revenge, paperback and e-readers at Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Now available in paperback and e-readers, all about Nikki, a fabulous first season. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air meets Clueless in this absolutely fabulous African-American 1990s teen sitcom. Get all 13 episodes of All About Nikki, the fabulous first season, in paperback and e-readers today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.